one, do you? Because I always hold on to my right hand. We are the lads from the Chilton. We'll support you till the end of the day. Nick, whenever you're ready. Nick. Of course, now the season has finished. We're Birmingham City. We've got no manager. Jude Bellingham's gone. We've retired his shirt. Uh, we staved off relegation by one place yet again. Simply not good enough. Not good enough now. Not good enough next season. We've just got to write this one off now and crack on. And uh, hopefully the fans will be back soon. Well, it's been a strange old season, ladies and gents. I'm sure you're aware. And uh, tonight we're joined with uh, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> Mr. Robe. Hello. Hello, everyone. You're right. Mr. Sheen. Good evening, all. My good self. And of course, Mr. Pringle. I mean, sorry, Liam Ridgewell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good intro. It's the best introduction I've had in a while. Cool. <laughs> No, that is, that is one hell of a mustache, mate. That's a proper quality. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Proper quality. <laughs> oh, God, blimey. Where do we start? I mean, we've got, we've got uh, an, an hour and a half, and I, and I just... Uh, Chris, I genuinely don't know where to start. Oh, golly. <laughs> what a painful, horrible, vile football season that was from pretty much start to end. Yep. I think most, that, most people have it's finished. We're the second biggest city in the country, and I keep saying it, and I keep saying it, and I keep saying it. And we just managed to stave off relegation every year. It's not going to continue because Lady Luck will not smile on you all of the time. So we have to do something, and that something has to be done now. Now. We need announcements from the club as to what their plan is going forward. Your thoughts, Paul? Exactly what you've just said, Nick, to be honest. I mean, we can we can keep saying the same thing over and over again every week, but, you know, for as long as the problem's there, it's never going to go away. I genuinely think that, you know, we could employ Jürgen Klopp tomorrow and he's still struggle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, I find a quip for every time you'd said that, mate. Yeah. But it's true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the way, unfortunately, that's the way we are being run, um, you know, and until that changes... Um, then nothing's going to change. 
Liam, I'll come to you. What, what, do you, what do you think about the demise that's happened over the last, well, 10 years? Yeah, it's a massive shame. I think any club that gets that gets relegated and doesn't come straight back up, it's a massive struggle. And I think we've seen that year after year with, with teams that have gone down. I think, obviously, that's what probably kills a lot of people that were there playing at the top of the Premier League and winning the Carling Cup and things like that and seeing the club go down and not return again. Um, but like you said, I think year on, year out, it can't keep continuing. It can't keep staying up by a point. It's a whisper. It's a whisper every single season. Uh, you know, I mean, our owner was put into prison abroad, right? We've just had manager after manager after manager. It's just been joke after joke after joke. And the only people that always suffer is me, him, 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 and everybody else out there. Of cool. course, so as well, and you know, I don't make you wrong. All the fans are suffering, and and you know, I know a lot of people talk about players. Players are suffering as well. You know, they go go to Birmingham City wanting to put the club back where it should be, and wanting it to be great again, and wanting it to be competitive again. And I'm sure Leeds have managed it. You are. Leeds have managed it. Leeds have managed it absolutely. I think you know they've had the investment, the players, the manager that they've that then they've seen the rewards for it. They've seen that you know that's been stuck behind it, and I think that's what we need to get to to get a manager in there that works, which is very difficult, and getting players in there that want to come there, want to play for the football club, and, and want to stay there um, to make sure they get back to it. Mm. And Leeds are the prime example, aren't they? I mean, it's took them what sixteen years to get back to the Prem. Yeah, it, it's it's not easy. It's not easy no. at all, and, and the league is very very tough. But when you when managers we keep coming and we going. can't just keep leaking results like we've done since lockdown. No, that, you that can't. Has, that's no. been woefully shameful. When, you, when managers, keep, not you can't, you can't, you know, managers can't, can't keep coming and going, like players can't keep lockdown. coming and going. You need no, to start that, to form an identity, shameful. form a philosophy, form you know all, all these tactical names and things. Like you need to form a team that is ready yeah. to compete. And compete in the league, and that might not take next season. It might take two seasons, but you've got to stick with it, and you've got to stick hard at it. And it needs to be a manager to come in with the right philosophy that Birmingham City play a certain way. Whether that's passing, whether that's grafting, whether that's sticking players in there that just want to run every single week and work hard for the club to make sure that they try and compete and get back to where they should be. Absolutely. Mm. Well, long before you finish your coaching badge. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm right on it. <laughs> <at the minute. laughs> I mean, let, I know, Liam, can I if it's an interview. ask? Sorry, Nick, can I ask Liam? Uh, you, you, you question, the, the next question that I want to ask is hmm. Would you actually take the job in its current state? Absolutely. Oh, my God. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think anyone, you know, I think you, you are you ask even guards, obviously, at the, the club right now, and he's been in what coaching there for the season, and he's been there the last, what, two, yeah. three seasons, if I'm correct. You know, I'm. I, Sure, he would jump at the chance. I'm sure he'd love to to have a bash at it. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. It's, it, it, it can it can be very difficult, and if you get stung by it, you can be scarred for your whole managerial career. But who the wouldn't rest take it? Who wouldn't want to be? Especially beat? when you're a young bloke. Of mm. course, but look at it on a positive side, which I do, and a lot of other people do. If you get it right, you bang on. Mm. You've no, got to get it. Oh, go on. Well, sorry, yeah, I was, I, was, I was going to ask you, Liam. You was at the club under, obviously, the Sullivan and Carson Young regimes. Um, mm. Was it was it was there much difference um, in the working environment being being around the club as a player between the two? Was well, so, it uh, working environment? Obviously, I came there with Steve Bruce. Now, obviously, Brucey had a side that, like I say, the grafting side, the six, seven. Eight out of ten players every single week. You know, you didn't get these yeah. big dips of highs and lows. He formed a team that was ready to compete, ready to. He knew yeah. the job that he wanted. He knew the player he wanted, and he went after it. So he formed that team. Now he went, and when Carson then Carson Young came in, there was that optimism, optimism that came around the club and with the players. Yeah. You know, the likes of Pavlichenko and people like that being talked about. But for us, it didn't really make a difference what was going on in the board. Because we had a team that was one together, one all grafted in the same way, whether it was staying up, whether it was getting promoted, whether it was winning the Carling Cup. So really, the, it, you didn't see much of a difference. You just saw little bits of a difference here and there with, say, money, wages. 
but you saw the de demise of it when players came in on the money. They were, you know, triple what was people already been there. That's when you start to see a problem. Yeah, sure. And I just jump it, sorry, Paul. And Liam, from the outside sort of looking in, what were your thoughts on, um, for, for example, Pep last season? What did what did you think of Pep? And also, who do you think will be the ideal fit for uh, for Blues next season going forward? Good question. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think the Pep on the outside of it. No, we don't um, put you on the spot on this show, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you know what? It, I, I just saw a team that was struggling and just trying to go out there and graph, uh, graph results of you every single week. I, in the team, I think it was a struggle for identity and I think it was one week it was sort of playing attractive football and then it was sort of you know, graphed into get results. It wasn't one or the other really. Um, and that's what I saw. I'm not going to claim, claim to see every game. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't get to see every game. But that's the sort of you know, results that you started getting and you've seen it so up and down. Um, a manager going in there, I'd like to see a young, hungry, sort of wanting to make sure that the club can go back in the right direction. But talking about young and hungry, it's difficult in then trying to attract the players that you need. You know, they need experienced players in there, certainly through the core, mm -hmm. to help these other young players through it. But the way of football nowadays, people, the owners don't want experienced players they want players that they can sell on that doesn't always work in football you know you need to mix them in with older pros certainly in the championship to work to work hard so can't even give you an answer for a manager i'm not gonna lie to you go and stick craig gardner in there and then see you might get some hunger back in there yeah hmm. interesting hmm. Hmm. right uh cool. right paul's got a very special question for you liam so yeah so um quite a few of our fans have said did you really wipe your backside with 20 pound notes and if so why <laughs> right now. I got this. <laughs> go on liam it, it froze it froze for a second there you go oh uh, did you did you get the question no, I didn't. No, that's quite oh. good. You must, you must have cut me off on that bit. I must have looked like I was just ignoring it. That's no, no. Was... <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Paul. I, I, no, I said that um, quite a few of our fans have asked the question about you wiping your backside with twenty pound notes, and, and a few of them have just asked why. If you did, well, they're asking if you did it, and if so, why? Allegedly, uh, no, I didn't wipe my ass with twenty pound notes. That was really, really hurt, <laughs> and it would be an absolute disgraceful thing to do. Uh, two. It was a bet with one of my friends over an X Factor um, competition. <laughs> I'd picked out the winner. I wish I was working with Simon Cowell now. I picked out the winner from the auditions who actually went on to win. Um, right. ah. a, a ridiculous bet with him. Um, and it was going on for so long. Um, I was taking a Jimmy Riddle. He came in and went, you know, what, you know where you can stick your money? And sort of like chucked it at me. You know, just because right. uh, I was angry yeah. him for so long. Um, chucked it at me and so obviously then I'd gone well you know yeah you, you can know where I'm going to stick your money type of stuff I'm just going to go and spend it and whatever um, <laughs> the picture it ended up on my BBM and his BBM we were just it was just a joke between friends because I was joking that I'd like, taken his money off him because he was so tight with it um, <laughs> but obviously that made its way to people to people to people Obviously, it made its way to a certain newspaper, um, and then yeah, it went from you know strength to strength from, from there really. So now I didn't wipe my ass with it. It was a, it was a joke. It wasn't thousands of pounds as it, was, as it was. It was a you know it was 150 pound, which I'm not saying is not not a lot of money before people go on that one. I'm just saying it wasn't thousands of pounds that people people like to make it out. Sure, I'll tell you what. I think I'd rather have had the paper version than these new plastic ones. <laughs> yeah, that's <cool>. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Do you remember that? IZAL? No. I'm not uh, sure. It's a paper you used to have. It's a shiny. It was like tracing paper, believe me. Oh, yes, of course. On, oh. on, the, on the train stations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a real crooky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Liam. Let's go back to the Carlin Cup then, mate. Um, wow, what a day. What's your recollections of it? Oh, incredible. Um, yeah, still, obviously, still 
think about now and talk about now. Um, yeah, I, it, uh, unbelievable. I recollect just going down and staying in the hotel in London and night before, you know, sorting out tickets and sorting out where the families were going to be and, um, you know, suited and booted. I mean, every, everything that every young kid dreams about, you know, and I always dreamed about, you know, winning a major trophy. But, you know, in my career, the way it went, you know, I, I weren't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily going to happen. You always dream about it, but it weren't necessarily going to happen. You know, Villa, Birmingham, and West Point, you weren't necessarily going to wait with major honours. So it was an incredible thing to do and something that, as soon as, you know, as soon as we got to Wembley and obviously Carly spoke about a lot, seeing Arsenal turn up in their track suits and, you know, um, getting onto that pitch, you know, and then, you know, Alex saying, you know, playing it, you know, all he said was, we're going man to man. We're going to absolutely bully them and physically get into them. We're going man to man. Nothing, run out nothing. If they, than what any nothing that you found once up and down this country in every game. We don't want pretty football. Mm. Come then, come no. out that tunnel, to that to that to that crescendo of absolute sheer noise, yeah. and I'm sorry to have been part of that. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. What was that? For? I've got goosebumps in there. <laughs> what was that like for you? Yeah, incredible. I've I've got the photo in my um, TV in my lounge of us standing there, and you've got the the blue and light, white lines. Obviously, there was yeah. the red the red crap on that side and there was yeah. blue and white lines going all the way around and as soon as you came out you heard it and you heard all blues bands louder than them and it, yeah, oh, it, was, yeah. it, it said, they didn't sing at all that's why i'm smiling because it, it was nah nah it was incredible because do you know what that they they had major honors or whatever this was this was our day and that's what we said it was our day and we were going to make it our day and uh yeah, it was it was amazing. You know, sorry, you know, you know when you said before the game they were coming out the tracksuits and all the rest of it. Was there any sort of snide comments? Mm. Did you get the feeling they were like looking down the noses at us? You know, no, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I'd love to, but they didn't. Um, they didn't. It was just Arsenal. You know, they turned up in their tracksuits. Is it for us? It, you know, like I said, it, we we got our, all our suits done. We were suited and booted. We were turned up. to... Yeah. You know, I remember Liverpool May United and Liverpool turned up in their white suits. And, you know, that's what yeah. you all dream of, getting these suits yeah. ready and getting going. They didn't yeah. do that. They just, to to us, they just thought, well, it's just another game. We'll get, in, get our track suits, get there, win it and get home again. Yeah. Uh, a, they thought, we didn't, didn't they? Any more motivation. Uh, we didn't need any more motivation. But nah. Kari, Kari stuck a little cherry on top and uh, away we went. Yeah. Yeah. What no, a that day. picture with, him, uh, with the Villa fans as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like at half time, Len? When he obviously going in at half time at one one, and they just equalised, didn't they? Just before, what was said at what yeah. was said at half time yeah. to come back and carry on the way we played on that second half? Because we were by far the better team on that day. You no, know, it all it was, it was, yeah. and obviously Bo should have had a penalty. Um, yeah. So it was sort of it weren't disheartened. You know, like some teams might have come in and thought. Oh, yeah, we've lost mm. our chance here, or that's gone, that's gone. We were like, I, I don't even remember much being said. I just remember it just being, let's go again. You know, I think yeah. we could have played for it at half time. It was just like, just keep going, boys. Don't worry about it. They, they don't fancy it. Just keep going, just keep going. And the way we scored, obviously, it had a, a, a massive bit of luck to it. But I still felt we were deserved of what we were doing. And, you know, we could have been, what, two. 2-1, 3-1, probably going at half-time, maybe 2-1. So we still should have been in, in the lead. But it's Arsenal, so um, nothing was really said. It was just, just carry on, boys, just keep going. It, yeah. is, it is Arsenal, right? And at half-time, I was... I was um, where the Obafemi Martins goal was, was scored, if you're looking at that goal, I was right at the top in the corner flag, OK? So right up in, in the... I was, I was, I was there as well, yeah. And um, the people around me, just after half-time... Were subdued, right? And at the top of my voice, I'm shouting me out for everybody, like, "Come on, get a good! We can do this! Get a grip! We we don't sit quiet! We don't sit quiet!" And everybody was like looking at me, and then, yeah, we, we started making a noise again, and it was like, "Yeah, come on!" And there was hope, and there was belief, and there was fear, and there was every emotion running through mine yeah. and my three sons' bodies until that was at 84th, 85th minute, or something like that, 86th minute. Mm. Um, 
you know, when, when a lady looks, strokes you, she strokes and she gives you that good opportunity. And over 30 Martins, put that away and that celebration afterwards. It's just, I'm still there now. I'm still going through that emotion now, <laughs> this minute, all these yeah. years later. Um, and we had the same, you know, we had the fear of, you know, this might be the only chance we get or some of yeah. us may get, you know, so take it with every, you know, that's what we were saying, you know, take it with both hands and go out there. From my we, point we of view, fear it, from just three children's point of view, there with me, and from everybody else's point of view, on this Tilton talk show, and who were there on that night, the only thing I can say is thank you so much for that great memory. It was, it yeah. just, wow, at least um, we've got, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, 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 and for us. It's so yeah, surreal though, isn't it? Boys. It's so surreal, even all these years later, you know, nine years later, it's just... Yeah, it's I'm, so still, I'm still, I'm still... there, I yeah. promise you, I can, I can shut my eyes, right, and I'm actually still in that stadium listening to all that sound and, and you yeah. know, that's ten years ago. It's incredible, yeah. yeah. It does, yeah. it still lives on, and, and, and that's what, you know, them days are made for, and that's why it, it, why it means so much, and that's why it still sticks with people, and that's why I say... You get a, a, a group together that it means everything to everybody. It, mm. It's something special, and you know that's why it sticks in, in everybody's minds as well. Well, I loved I loved the video you took afterwards, Liam. You know, and they gave you the video at the end. <laughs> yeah, have you still got a copy? Yeah, of yeah. That? <laughs> that was class. That was. No, I don't, I've got the photo. I've got the photo of that me doing the video. I think the geezer was doing oh, yeah. it, and I end up taking taking it off him. But I've got the photo of it. I ain't got the video, which uh, God knows what it would, be, would have been like. But uh, all I've just got the photo of me having the video, which is quality. Who was That's taking it? The they had, they gave Liam a handheld video yeah. at the end. Was it the Blues uh, website? One I think guys it was, Blues yeah. website. One yeah. of the young boys. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So anybody out there that knows what this video is, could we please get a copy to Liam? It's brilliant. Please, <laughs> yeah, please, please send it over. Yeah. <laughs> and I know my good friend Courtney is there. Uh, as you just said, it's only, only, we're still the only team in Midlands to lift a major trophy in the past 20 years. Craig, see what you can do about getting uh, Liam a copy of this video, buddy. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Uh, Paul, we've got, have we got some questions lined up, uh, Paul? I'm trying to. I'm having issues here connecting, but, um, oh, right, but yeah, okay. I've, got, I've got a few. Um, yeah, that's the up, somebody, asked, somebody asked Liam, obviously for you on the en route to the final, we knocked obviously them up the road out in the court final. And how did that feel for you personally, mm. obviously having been there previously? Yeah, do you know what? It, 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 it was a great, a great emotion and, and an unbelievable day. Obviously, I still had friends at the club um, and had people there that if we didn't win, I mean, I'd have been absolutely slaughtered. Um, but yeah, it was, cool. yeah, it was great. Obviously, you know, we were we, we we knocked out our rivals to go on to to win a major trophy. Yeah, um, but they still know, heard and, from it. Believe me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. But you know that that's that's the way that's the way derbies go. You know, I felt that when I was at Villa, I felt like that when we won derbies. I, I felt that as well, and and that's what I think. You know, hopefully that's what endeared me to the Blues fans that, you know what, it wasn't just, you know, me just moving. I moved to to play football and do something good for the club and, and we managed to do that. You know, there was a, a lot of up, downs as well, but there was a, a, a massive up. So, mm. yeah, it was great. You know, simply yeah. it was great. So, no, it was, it was not a difficult, night, obviously, for not a difficult lot of reasons afterwards as well. Yeah. And uh, my kids actually yeah. wanted to put it was, to the pit, yeah. but... Um, I, I, I don't think it's even worth mm. talking about because I, I don't get involved in anything like that because just just wrong, it's wrong. And my kids wanted to go on the pitch and celebrate, but like, man, did Dad shout at them or what? You know, <laughs> did Dad shout at them? And there was three, all three of them were there. And then, oh, that semi-final, that noise after that. Oh. With a okay, sarah, sarah, wherever we'll be, we'll be. Oh, great, mate. What a night that was. I just remember Nick, Nick, uh, Nicholas no, Zigic's long leg. I would right down the front of the goal to the tilt end. Sorry. <laughs> go, on, go, on, go, on, go on, Liam. <laughs> I go just on, remember Liam. Nicholas Zigic's long leg just getting onto that ball in the wet. That's all I remember. Yeah. Just his, I think it was a cross in. He ended up scuffing it into the ground and going over. Oh, it was like, you know, one of them things. I remember when it was Cameron who put that in there. Cameron Jerome. Was, or was it really? It was Cameron Jerome, yeah. Oh, so he knows everything. Oh, he's, he's got the memory of us. He everything. <laughs> was it with his yeah. left foot? No, right. Oh! How does he know that? I thought, 
thought he'd even cross it with his left foot, it would have been even more remarkable, which would have been quality. Cool, <laughs> What's his star sign, Paul? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For that game, I was the player. <laughs> Hilton and uh, the, the, the chap who does security down there, and I still see him now. I was saying, like, you know, we only need to do, we only need to, we only, and he's going, you know what, no chance, no chance, absolutely no chance tonight. And you know what, pulling that one off uh, and, and getting that passage to go down to the old smoke and, you know, show them what the blue and white arm is all about was amazing. Yeah. And I've still got to say credit and thank you mm -hmm. to my son, Luke, who spent 14 hours queuing for our tickets, 14 hours in the oh, filthy... Man. Old February rain outside St Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> we had a game. We, 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 I don't know why we put a game on on that day as well. Why we, you know, sold the tickets on the same day when we were playing Stoke, Stoke at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a weird. Stoke, I remember yeah. seeing. I remember seeing like loads of people walking in the ground at half time that had been queuing for their tickets. Yeah, missed, missed the first half. It's crazy, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. 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 They'd all been there. But some of them have been there since like five a.m., four a.m. And, and they were still there at like, you know, quarter to four, just going into the ground after queuing yeah. for their cup final yeah. tickets. Mm. Crazy it was, yeah. <laughs> it's just madness. Uh, I've got it a question, question, like question from, idea, um, did, question, but, you know. sorry, I've got a question from, uh, from Ray, uh, a question for Liam. Uh, not asking you to pick the best, but did you find a difference between the fans at the clubs you've played for, or are they all the same? Uh, <clears throat> no, they're not, all, they're not all the same, no. Um, some are louder than others and some are louder than others all the time um, I think Villa Park could, could definitely be louder I think it's got louder this year but I think before that it wasn't as loud but their away, their away fans were like incredible I think they, they made a lot of racket Birmingham I think obviously my time there in, in the you know most of the time in the Prem I think were, were brilliant um, you know, there, there were down days, obviously, but I think most of the time they were brilliant. And away, the away fans, I think, obviously were great. West Brom fans, I think, were really good against the big teams, um, but expected a lot when you played the smaller teams. So they were they were quieter. Um, but away fans were brilliant. Uh, all three clubs away fans uh, were were brilliant, and you get that from mo most of the teams. But I think that's probably the, the difference, really. I've had some mental away days. Absolutely crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. Mm. You know, the concourses. I love the concourses. All the beards being chucked in the air and everybody's singing and dancing. <laughs> While you're on the floor. I've got, <laughs> um, I've got the questions up now. Um, so, yeah, Stephen Cowell's asking, Liam, what, what position did you prefer, playing left-back or centre-half? Because obviously oh, you were yeah. centre-half, weren't you? And then you went to left-back. Yeah, I loved playing centre-half. I loved being there. I loved the physical side of centre-half and being able to sort of smash through people in that. Uh, <laughs> but when I came when I came back and played at left back, I I I actually mentally thought, do you know what? If I'm playing left back, I'm playing left wing. I'm playing the whole <laughs> side. So if I'm playing there, you're going to find me in the box at the back post. And so I, I really enjoyed left back. Like really enjoyed it. That was yeah. It was, it was more fun. But I, yeah. I, I, I did feel myself as a centre half. So it was. It was just more fun at the fact because you're a bit more involved. But I did love, I love centre half. And so you got yeah. quite a few at the far stick, didn't you? I remember you arriving yeah. at the far yeah. post and getting quite a few goals that way. You used um, to love it, yeah. Faddy, yeah, yeah. Faddy used to sort of play on the sometimes on the right, and he'd sort of turn back out and just cross it, like just not even look and just whip it in, and sort of I'd end up like back stick. I think I got one one against Spurs, one against Liverpool. Uh, you scored against Derby in the cup, didn't you? That Derby in the cup as well. Yeah. 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 So when your best yeah, was... when your best goal, but <laughs> <laughs> I had a few well, cocky. That, that actually leads us on yeah. nicely to the next question from Shabon Kenny. She's asking out of the eleven goals you scored for Blues, what would be your top three and why? Oh good question. Um the one that my bet I think my favourite one was probably away at West Ham. In the Carling Cup. In the Cup semi-final, yeah. Cup yeah. Semi-final. Yeah. Uh, probably that was probably the best one. Um the other one, probably probably the cocking one against, I think it was Liverpool over Rayner. Yeah. Uh, as I remember it. Um and then I think we was away at Wigan, I scored sort of a volley. It was like a half volley or a volley. It was in the red yeah. kit. Um as uh, they then one stand out in my head. So I can't remember other one, you got you, you got a good one against Ipswich as well at home. That's right. That's what I was trying to remember. That one, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, I remember knee sliding on that one and thinking, call that a. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, the, they're the ones sort of stand out in my mind. Yeah. And what would you like say? What, what would you say was the best goal while you were on the pitch that was scored for us at St Andrews? Oh, um, Zarati scored a really good one. <laughs> oh, can't remember. It was against Everton. He scored a free kick. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think that was Everton. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. How does he do it? Yeah, I think that's that's right. I mean, it, Zarati gave us so many special moments. I mean, what a player! Yeah, it was quality, uh, wasn't it? Oh, amazing. And again. I mean, going back to it, you know, clubs falling out of the Premier League. We were just about to sign him at the end of that season. He was just about to that sign was, him and come, come to us. That, that was when Roddy Jolidi was dancing in front of the keeper, weren't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. That, you see that <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Se- and Seba used to, you know, Larson obviously used to, uh, some free oh. kick used to put some in. So, there's it's probably so many, uh, yeah. so many ones. You know, Stuart but, but again, Parkby, where he got fouled. Yeah, and we could talk about away goals as well. Obviously, Cameron, uh, Cameron's at uh, Liverpool away. Obviously, yeah. he was playing in that. Yeah, and also Seb yeah. Larson at Tottenham as well. Yeah, I mean that at Spurs, that was incredible. You know that one at, in, at Spurs. I'm sure did we, we won that day. I'm sure. Yeah, three yeah, two. Yeah, three two. Three, two. Yeah. Incredible. Could, uh, just coming from uh, Alan Westall, he wants to know what it was like to play with Ziggich alongside Ziggich. Do you know mm-hmm. what it, 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 it was? I mean, obviously, it was an unbelievable out, out ball. Um, and it, yeah, I, I just felt we just lacked some confidence. I think he just lacked that sort of, you know, confidence that he, we saw sort of in a World Cup. Great guy, would never have a bad thing to say about him, but just, you know, it, 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 it was tough for him. I thought I'd say it was tough for him. But mm. you know what? He scored in the Carling Cup finals. So what, what can you say bad about him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Shane Robert is asking you, Liam, who was the funniest player in the dressing room at the uh, uh, at Blues in your in your time at the club, and who was the most miserable? <laughs> I mean, Gars was the funniest. I mean, obviously, yeah. I think uh, there's many stories that have come out about him, and uh, it was probably the funniest. Miserable, I see. It's, pro- it's probably Johnny. and I would Damian say, Johnson. I wouldn't say he's miserable. I certainly wouldn't say he's miserable. He'd probably come and knock me out. But I wouldn't say he's miserable. I just think that's just his persona. He, yeah. he was just sort of a hard shell. And once you got to know him, lovely guy, but he come across miserable, but really good. <laughs> <laughs> and is there any good, any, any good pranks you can tell us about, um, obviously, that you're able to say? Well, me, yeah, me, me and Craig Garner used to hide the masseuse's uh, car um, every now and again. <laughs> we, we hid it one day that he couldn't find it. We actually found out it was his old man's car and he nearly called the police to come back because he thought he'd got nicked. <laughs> so the security guard actually stopped him and actually had, had to tell him um, me and guards filled, filled his car with sort of snow, snow one day and obviously started, started <laughs> again we found out it was his old man's car he was driving so that didn't go down too well <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was we, we used to fill the hot tub with uh, uh, Radox uh, and obviously it used to just spill out we used to have a table in, table in the dressing room, which obviously bubbles used to come out. We used to play a game where you slid on your front, obviously <laughs> nothing gone. Slid on your front, you had to go through the table, both ends to try and get through to the other side of the table. And then obviously <laughs> the young boy who used to come in and say, stop filling it with Radox. And obviously we'd do it again after we <laughs> emptied it and refilled it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Brown. Really? Chris Brown, could you review that comment that Penny's just put on and just say if we wrote to say that one or not? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen it. What's that? Oh, we, oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not it, sure we can say that, that one. <laughs> run through your legs and miss your tackle. <laughs> no, miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of like um, that it was, yeah. We've got another one, Liam. Steve Jobs asking, after the Carling Cup triumph, what did you actually, sorry, what did... You attribute the relegation to? Do you feel? Do, do you feel the manager may have been too negative? No, I don't. Um, no. The, the one I think I put it down to leading up to the Carling Cup final, a lot of the boys were playing with injuries or certainly getting through games to make sure we we were. I've got into the Carling Cup final, or or they played in it. So it was it was a lot of a lot of energy exerted yeah. to get into it. And obviously, when we got there, exerted a lot of energy against an Arsenal team that. You know, like I said, we played man to man. You know, I, I'm, 
people are going to say, well, that's football and that's what you should be doing. You should be running. But we, we exerted a lot of injury and the boys went through a lot to get there. So once we won it and suddenly come out of it, yeah, I think we played West Brom on the Saturday, did we? The following Lost week? Lost 3-1, yeah. Lost 3-1. And I still say, if that game had gone differently, if we drew it, if we, long, if we didn't lose it, I mean, you know, looking back on it, it was just something we just needed to get through. You know, the squad wasn't big enough to be able to rotate mm-hmm. everybody. You know, people were still playing and wanting to make sure then we, we stayed up. So I, I, that's what I put it down to. I didn't put it down to the gaff being too negative. Because no. that's we, we were that kind of team. We were like that all season. And we won the yeah, yeah. Up by doing that. We yeah, stayed yeah. up the year before by doing that way. Yeah. So it wasn't negative. It was just people would put so much into it, injuries and, and getting through stuff, you know, tablets to get through games. Uh, you know, it just it just unraveled. And once we lost on that Saturday, the, the pressure was on. Then it was like, right, you need to win a game. You need yeah. to get... I remember, I remember the, the, week, the week after the Albion game, we had Fulham at home and we were shocking. And it yeah. did seem to, rightly or wrongly, it looked as though something had gone on beforehand. We weren't quite with it. And it went short to, even short to nearly scored with a goal kick. Yeah. And it, did you yeah. shed any light on that? Did anything happen? Or? No, I don't, not, not that I remember. I certainly don't. Nothing so I could put my finger on. It was just, no. it's just something we couldn't get out of that sort of rot. And, you know, you see it even, you know, this, this season, you, you're in Bournemouth. And once you get in it, we'd had such a high. And then sort of once we lost away at, at home at West Brom, it was just a, mm. just a, a graft and a grind. You know, and we still, we still was within a chance. You know, who could f- foresee, I think, what, Wigan that came mm. back and, and stayed up? Or that, you know, they were, what, 2-0 down on the last day of the season? We was away at Spurs, I think yeah. they were. And then they came back. It was just a turn of events. And it was just... It just felt like a massive, massive graph towards the end of the season. And I don't think we... No, not, not I don't. I know we just didn't have the squad to be able to cope with it. And it, mm. it just didn't work. Joys and sorrows. And the, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. One last fan question as well. Sam Mullick's asking, did you want to stay at Blues after relegation? Or did the club want to sell you? And did you want to play more in European games with Blues? I want, I, I want to play more Premier League games. You know, that's, mm. that's what I want to do. I want to play at the top flight as long as I could. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I take I take responsibility for Birmingham go down like all the players do. But yeah. the team was so dispersed and, and it got so, you know, chewed up because of the yeah. boys. Were, were, uh, we was all at, you know, 25, 26, 27 sort of peaks of our career. I'm not going to talk for anyone else. I was at my peak of my career and I wanted to play more Premier League games. Um, yeah. And that sadly, it wasn't going to happen. And that's why I wanted to move on to be able to do that. Now, it didn't happen in that summer uh, and, and I stayed at Birmingham and it, it, the club sort of just, it, it started to disperse even more and obviously we got to the, the January um, and then, you know, obviously my time was up and, and I moved on but I wanted to play more games in the Prem. That's why I came to Birmingham. So I came that's to Birmingham. That's a perfectly acceptable answer, Liam. And I mm. actually thank you for your honesty. What, what you just said there, is your explanation of exactly the, the, the events that happened. Mm. And that's all we expect and that's all we ask is that you yeah. come out. And you yeah. know something? Robbie Savage did it for us a couple of weeks ago, yeah? Mm. And made a public apology to every Birmingham City fan. He said yeah. he would love to get back onto the centre circle and just come out and clap and say thank you to everybody. Course, Within yeah. 10 minutes, this show had sorted it. Yeah. I mean, it's that, sad, you know, that's football. You know, thing, things, yeah. you know... It, I'm not being funny, but I'm I'm a football fan and, and other people Which are football team? fans. You know, that's that's what happens. I'm a keep your fan. I keep say you keep your fan. I was when I was a boy, you know, when you're in football, it's tough to support support teams because you may play against them. But I understand it, I get it. I just think if you give people honesty, they might still not like it, but they might respect you for it. Exactly. And that's, that's good. You're, you're yeah. absolutely correct. Sometimes mm. we don't like what's gone on, right? Mm. But sometimes that explanation, sure. especially when it comes out of a player's mouth, right? Yeah. Because he's now yeah. in the public domain and it's and it's going out live oh. and you can't yeah. hide behind anything. This is why I was so appreciative of, 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 of Sav. Man, I tell you what, that was a cracking interview we had with him a couple of three weeks ago. And he was so straight with it. He was proper apologetic for the way, the way and the manner in which he left the football club. Of course. You know, yeah. that left a sour taste on Elmo's. But you know what? He healed that yeah. rift back, right? Yeah, did he pull? And that's all people want, didn't they? You know, so yeah, yeah, want, yeah. Everybody wants that. You know, a player wants that within a football club. A fan wants yeah, that within yeah. their football club. A manager wants yeah. that, but yeah. sometimes you don't get it. 
You don't, it doesn't so as a boy, you go to park rangers much? Oh, Nick. Sorry? As a boy, did you, did you go to many games? My old man used to work around a corner, so that's why I liked him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Palace fan. He used to work around the corner from from the oh, Loftus right. Road, so that's why I picked him. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, Did they ever try and sign you, Len? No, sadly no? not. I tried to get there at the end of my career. Didn't want me. I was too old. So, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> too old. You want to start working here? Just yeah, no. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> Just going back to the previous conversation, I can totally understand that because I don't think it matters what you do. Um, you know, you've always got to try and perform, you know, at, at, at the top level that you possibly can in whatever you do. Of course. And, you know, it, do, does it like Mark, that we got relegated? Absolutely. Would I love to see being able to, to get Birmingham City back up into Premier League? Absolutely. But the team that we, we were left with, I didn't see it happening. And I wanted to be in the Premier League. I wanted no. to play. So, you know, I took that decision. You know, it's a work that's, decision, that's, isn't it, at the end of the day? Goes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's a work decision. You're at work, yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Right, it's like yeah. Sav, when Sav said the other week, you know, he went for 10 grand more and mm. to go and play for his childhood hero. Of course. It's an understanding. We didn't know that information before that, you know? No, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Once you hear that yeah. little bit, no, one, no one's going to ask him that at the time. No, and no. he might not be able to give you that because it, that's football. That's the it's way... Because the mainstream media don't care. They don't care. All no. they want is just is sell, sell newspapers, get yeah. more, and, yeah. and royal more people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's your story with your, with your, you know, with your mate with, your, with the toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Whatever. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. 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 Interesting. So Craig, one, one last question. Sorry that I forgot to ask. Do, do, Craig Courtney's asking: um, Do you still have your, your, your shirt from the cup final? Um, and how did you feel when the winning goal happened? Um, and, and also, how did you feel with? Barry Ferguson's celebration, obviously, with his little tap on the back of uh, <laughs> Kashani's head. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I still have my shirt. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That was, you Second know, that... question is, can I have it? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got a question here from, uh, from mm. Adam. He says, um, uh, what English league would you compare the quality MLS to uh, and what made him end up at Hull? Um, oh, Good questions. Uh, Fergie's clip on the ear was brilliant, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he loved it. Um, Matt, what the, I, I compared it to, it's like the good games, obviously, you know, you're talking, talk, playing David Villa and Slatin and Ibrahim Rich and these types of world-class PLO and that, that, that's sort of like middle to top-end championship. You know, them games, are, they're quick and, and fast, but some of the other games are probably bottom-end of championship, top-end League One. Where you you sort of go and playing in, you know, ninety five degrees of heat, mm. you know, ninety seven degrees of humidity, you know, in DC where it's an absolute graft, you know, the the game's slow and it's hard. So uh, that's why I, that's why I put it at. Um, but it's only getting bigger and back, better and quicker. So uh, that, that's obviously that one. Ew. Hole Hole was uh, Hole actually the the sporting director or whatever they call themselves nowadays um, who recruit players. Used to be at West Brom, so that's how I ended up there, which was amazing. Loved my time there. Boys of quality, Matt. You know, Nigel Atkins learnt a load off him, which was a great manager. So yeah, it was a, a, a real good time. Just a long, long way away from East London, so uh, you know that was a bit of a shame. Mm. And who was the best manager you ever played for, Lynn? Uh, Rua Hodgson. I mean, it, it's it is very tough to pick a few of them apart because they all sort of. You know, Brucey, they're all sort of man's man. Brucey, um, you know, McLeish, you know, obviously man's man's, you know, Caleb Porter I had out in Portland. Uh, but Roy was, I liked his style of management and and I look at him how I want to manage. That's sort of how I want to go about my way of managing. And I took mm. so much from him. So that's why I, I say him. Yeah, and who would you say was the best player you ever played with the Blues and, and against in your whole career? Against in my whole career, it was Ruth Van Nistelrooy, obviously United. Oh, Only guy that gave me a physical headache while coming off the pitch. Only time without hitting my head or kicking someone's boot or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, best time, best player I played with at Birmingham. Um, cool, do you know what? There was, there was some really good... I mean, you know, like Joe, when Joe Hart come... Amazing, you know, on yeah. from Man City, what what a goal like what a goalkeeper we had, yeah. you know, and what 
what what goalkeepers we had for uh, all the time. I, you know, Mike Taylor. You know, what a guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. Such an experience. Then we had Co. <clears throat> then we had Fozzie. I mean, two yeah. like England goalkeepers. Um, but I think I'd probably say I. I hate to say it, it'd probably be Kari. And when I see him again, he'll be like, ah, you picked me and like But <laughs> Kari, I, I learned a lot from him. You know, obviously he was a senior pro, but I learned, I learned a lot from him and he was a good guy. So, um, Great player. Probably him, yeah. What was he like as a captain? Do you know what? He was, he was everything uh, that I thought a captain should be. Um, and obviously when I kept it, I spoke a lot and you know, did that side of it. He didn't necessarily do that. He sort of did it within his actions or a glare or a hand gesture <laughs> to Villa fans, you know, so it was, it was, he just went about it differently. And uh, yeah, obviously great skipper. Yeah. Really good. Like perfect time after Damien Johnson, obviously he, he took over it and it was sort of, you know, <laughs> I, obviously I had the captain's armband within the time and then Kari turned up um, and then, yeah. So a great person to learn off. The if, if jo- sorry, 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 Paul. On, I was going to say, on, if, 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 if um, Joe Hart became available and you were, in, you know, you could afford him, would you take a chance on him even now? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm. I, I don't know. It, I'm either not in football enough, or I'm not in the know, or I don't know what. But I don't know why people. You know, he went to West Ham and he played mm-hmm. behind a defence that was not great. It made him look a not a great. Co- I mean it. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I get burnt, the Burnley thing. You know, Pope was coming through. He's young. I get that. And they're sort of going with him. He's England. And, you know, Joe is too old and whatever they want to say. And Nick Pope's coming through. But, I, yeah, I don't get why someone ain't knocking down the he's, door to he's, take Joe. I was going to say he's absolute quality. And I'd, I'd take him tomorrow. I, I, don't, I don't. That's what I say. I don't know whether I'm too far. I don't. I, but I probably don't know football. That's what I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. So uh, yeah. no, I don't understand. It's strange. It might have been the air spray adverts and the you know the the, the or whatever <laughs> yeah. it was. On. <laughs> yeah, he could have ruined it for him. It was yeah. I mean, uh, Liam, are you still in contact I'm, with Steve Carr? Yeah, I still speak to Kari. Yeah, still send him a message. Him. Tell him we'd be desperately glad to get him on here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it, do you know what? He, he's he's so far. He's like Paul Scholes, you know, trying to get him to do an interview and things like that. Just yeah, but this is for Blues fans. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're a different breed. We're a different breed to the rest of the world. Absolutely. We, we just, all, we, all we want to do is just interact, and we're ever so grateful for you for coming on tonight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, like, like it's like uh, Paul said, you know, we got our children listening. We get, we get, we get people listening in Australia. They get up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, we we get uh, vulnerable and our disabled people listening as well. Yeah. Um, so it's an absolute. Uh, Pleasure it, to have you. Have even you on, even yeah. people in Smedic. Yeah. Yeah. And Warrington. <laughs> Warrington as well. Yeah. Warrington. Yeah. And they've even listened to tuning in to me. So that's even bigger bonus. Christ. <laughs> it's a good thing. That's what I say. It, 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 it's nice. It's good. And I think, you know, I'll, I'll tell Kari, it's, it's hard enough to meet him for a beer, let alone get him on a Zoom call to do anything. That's an hour, an hour on a Monday night. He can, he can sit and have a red wine. I'll see, I'll see you've not started drinking much yet. No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hour and a half. He's in and Spain now, isn't he? It's a blessing to be in, in a time like this in, yeah. in the COVID pandemic that we've got something like Zoom that we can just communicate with. Mm. I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. it's, it's something that's brought a positive out of COVID where people are suddenly sort of, I don't know, just interacting and speaking more and, and you know, hearing more, you know, and getting people on that have played for the that's club and we get to talk. We, we, we to continued it. the show all the way through the pandemic every single Monday night, right? And obviously, mm. we, we chatted together and we, we thought, oh, shall we just like knock it on the head and then come back when it all comes back? But we thought about all, all, all the people rather than it was nothing to do with ourselves, right? Because this mm. is an hour and a half on a Monday night that we just love anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the real reason was was for all the vulnerable people, for all our disabled friends, for the, and the charity works that we do and one thing and other. Um, we've got to continue this. And you know what? I'm so, so, so glad that we have done. No, absolutely. Mm. It's, it's, the guest list has been phenomenal. It's and a great, look, it really is a great thing. Tonight, ladies and gents. Mm. It is a great thing. Mm. Look what we're topping it off with tonight. <laughs> Paul? Mm. Yeah? Uno to 11 Oh, yes. Yeah. Go I just on, wanted yeah. to ask Liam, I just wanted to ask you first, who was your footballing hero growing up? Oh, um, so my, my, very first one was Robbie Fowler. 
Yeah. Um, I used to wear the thing over my nose, centre forward, as most young kids were, until you get too slow and you get moved back to every position and you can't go far <laughs> enough. Uh, Robbie Fowler. But uh, QPR obviously turned to Sir Les Ferdinand. Um, great great to, play winner. Used to do headers with my old man in, in a swimming pool and try and rise and stay in the air and things like that. So, uh, you know, centre forwards, you know, Robbie Fowler was obviously the only one, Les Ferdinand. But obviously, once I then settled down at, at Villa and started playing centre half, Rio Ferdinand was someone I looked up to and, and watched and, you know, were, you know loved. Yeah. So it was, and, and just to prove it, Liam, here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Paul Monahan is tuning in from Plymouth. Daniel Ruan is in Yardley. Mark Kerr is tuning in from Dubai. Uh, oh, wow. Cornwall from Robert Preston. Uh, Sparkill from Stephen Gill. Come on, where are you all from? As Chris Brown says, we want to know where you're all from. <laughs> Borsalith. Sparkill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so which it... London do you live then, Liam? Um, I'm East, East London. I'm like East round, London. Yeah, around Chigwell Way. I'm not Chigwell. Chigwell. But I'm around Chigwell Way, yeah. That's on the telly, isn't it? On Birds of a Feather. It is. Yeah, there you go. On, yeah. isn't it? Is that the only <laughs> thing Chigwell's yeah. famous for, really? There's got to be something else, surely. Only, <laughs> only where's Essex, I suppose, isn't it? Oh, is that, is that you where know it Dorian? Is? Ah, I, don't, I don't watch it, but I'm, that, that's definitely Chigwell Way. Ah, it's Essex. Right. Okay. You know, but that's Chigwell Way. I've uh, got a few more. Uh, Willie Castle, Costa del Daventry, uh, Erdington, Breen, Rugby, Southampton. So, you're wherever that is, Bourneville, uh, <laughs> Plymouth, Yoxall, Great Bar, New Zealand, uh, with Matthew Mr. Manchester, one out. Uh, Isle of Man, uh, Brighton, uh, uh, Queensland, Australia, keep right on, and it goes on and on. Costa Cell Daventry just stuck in my head straight away. That was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a nice place. Did, that is, uh, sorry, sorry, where did you live when you lived in, when you played for Blues, Liam? Where did you live in Brum? Or was it Solly oh. No, I was in Barnt Green. Oh, oh, the posh bit. No way out. Yeah, so I was around, literally around the corner. Um, bit posh there, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. I, was over in, I was over in Four Oaks, obviously, when I was at Villa. Even um, posher. Signs at Birmingham. Agent, agent, my agent said, do you know what, Rich, you, you may need to move. And I thought, what? He said, well, you know, just in case, you never know what might happen. And I thought, oh, move in you know it's 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 nightmare so i thought oh, do you know what all right fine okay fair enough then so i just tried to get as close to the training ground as i could it was like seven minutes away from the training ground of course it is yeah. um which was amazing you know used to get up and uh, and just roll out of bed and get get over there so uh <laughs> but then it nothing you know nothing really you know the fans are brilliant the both sets mm. of fans were brilliant about it because of, of football reasons so i didn't really need to move but i lived in Bank green lovely Lovely town, really nice. Some great pubs. Yeah, you have there. to get the bathtub away in the sink there, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you should have done. I hope the, the people living in it might not say that, but you should have done. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. Don't Some great that. pubs around there, but just so it was just a bit out of the way, really. But it was nice because yeah. it was sort of the top of the M40. Was to mm. get back south home uh, was a was a good commute. Mm. And what are your yeah. favourite sports apart from football? Then? Oh well, now it's golf. Yeah, Love golf. Hated golf. Hated yeah. it before. Never played it at all. Uh, just started it before I went to Portland. Thought anyone that played golf, what's the point? But now I realise, you know, it's brilliant, unbelievable. Um, yeah. Like you used to love like table tennis. Played that quite yeah. a bit growing up. Used to love a bit of table tennis. Um, do you know what? That was that was that was about it. You know, yeah. like badminton at school and that. Loved all that, but really. Obviously, it was such just football, football, football. Yeah. Anything else didn't really, you know, I, while I played, wasn't really worth it. You know. Mm. Uh, did, you, did, did you ever watch? Did you ever watch any of the American sports while you're over there? Or did yeah. you try and have, did you argue with them about you know the whole football thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? No, I, I I did watch it. I didn't really get it. Uh, start off no. with like the American football and you know the NBA, but then started going, which every Englishman does, you know, go to an NBA game. You know, think yeah. it's unbelievable. Not me, not me. I wouldn't. No, but realise you shouldn't go to an NBA game until the fourth quarter because nothing happens until the fourth quarter. Everyone's in the pub, and there's me sitting there watching it, thinking, "Oh, this is good, isn't it? <laughs> Where is everybody?" And I go out to go and get a beer, and everyone piles in for the fourth quarter, and yeah. you think, right? So then you understand. 
Uh, and then NFL, the Sundays were like here, super Sundays, you get the red zone. So I watched them. I, I did enjoy them in the end. And the draft, well, party, sorry. draft parties were even better. How can they call it football? I know, How can yeah. they call it football? <laughs> huh? it. Soccer, isn't it? Soccer. Soccer oh, sorry, yeah. there's, just no, yeah. there's nothing Soccer. worse than American football. There's nothing worse in the world yeah. than American football as a sport. I'm with you there, Nick. You know what? I'd, when rather, I was, I'd when... rather watch dominoes. When I, was, when, when, when I was in Florida, I, I asked a bloke that. I said, uh, why do you call it football? You know what he said to me? He said, it's because we pick up the ball and we run with it. So we're playing ball on foot. Oh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> call it run ball? Yeah, that's run ball, a, cra- yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a yeah. Cra- crazy answer. He didn't do himself any favours. Did, did you play against no. Birmingham Legion? <laughs> no. So I'm laughing no. Else. no. No. Liam, could you imagine me at an American football game? He's offside! He's offside! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The flag will be thrown up every two minutes for you, that's for sure. <laughs> Actually, you know, Liam, have you still got that massive piece of, um, like, oak tree? Was it wood when you scored a goal? Wood. Yeah, you still yeah. got it? Um, sadly, no. The old man wanted me to put it in a suitcase, and I was like, it's 25 kg going out the window straight away. <laughs> I'm going to get that in my suitcase. Um, I may... <laughs> One of my friends made it into like um, it was like a coffee table or an outdoor table uh, in Portland. Well, at least it's still going though. It's great. Yeah. So, yeah, the pe- people living in that house now have just got me, my face with a cup. Well, is it, is it Liam? Do you think it. that um, the, the Americans, when they're when they're playing their football, um, can sit in the chairs and, and take the beers down and you know da 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 da, and and yet we're still treated and herded like cattle? It's because it, well, it's because of the fights. Pure and simple, you know. It's I don't pretty, want to fight. I don't want to fight with anybody. Not, Coming up no, an you, area where you don't, say, you don't. Say, but fight, sorry, fights well, do happen. That's the problem. You don't. I don't, I don't fight, listen, I've worked DJ like that, that. You know that. That's the problem. I think you know the fans there. They go to uh, entertain the players. Where a lot of fans here, they go to the ground to be entertained. So they sit there and wait to be entertained. The fans in America go there to entertain the players. Different mindset, do you think? Diff, diff, oh, a massively different mindset, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I don't want to fight with anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I promise yeah. you, I don't want to fight with anybody. But oh my no. God, how much more would I love to have a pint of beer thrown down my neck than a red hot coffee? Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. I think, you know, you, right. you, you get, you know, you, uh, atmospheres would go up, you know, the, you know, people that didn't really want to sing or sort of shy off, you know, have a couple What's of beers, they, they'll, they'll have it, you know, and that that's what, Portland was so different of the fans because, you know, they went there to entertain the, the players. That's why you get the atmosphere that you get, really, every single don't, game. Don't you think that we entertain you as well, like, with our chance of singing? Absolutely, and listen, yeah. Birmingham, yeah. Birmingham is the funniest, funniest set of supporters that I know. And I've, <laughs> I've travelled up and down this country. There's nobody that can match our sense of humour. Oh, no, they, no. they certainly entertain. It, you know, it's just it's just a different mindset, what you get in America to, to England, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Liam, should we get on to your 1 to 11? Uh, just, just before we get on to 1 to 11, uh, Daniel's just said, Liam, do you fancy the manager's job? Oh, is, 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 that, is he on the board offering it to me? Christ, <laughs> give, tell him, give him my number, will you? I'd love it. Absolutely love it. Would you take it? Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd run up there from where I am right now. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? Nothing more do we want than an attitude like that. Nothing. Yeah. We don't want the wishy-washy football. We don't want the backroom stuff, the boards telling the, the, the manager how to run the chuffing club. Mm. We want a bloke in there or a woman in there, because I can't be sexist on this issue, who wants to bleed blue and white. End of. Yeah. That's nothing more than what we want. I think that that, that is... Uh, I, don't, I don't meet a football fan nowadays up and down the country that ain't like that and how they want their club to be run. You know, it, it, it's gone so far the other way where... There's someone telling the manager who to buy and what to do and what ridiculous you know. situation. Why Ridic- don't they man- why don't they manage? I never knew who owned Birmingham City Football Club in 1973 because you never heard his name. No. Still don't. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but you know what I mean, Paul. With, with, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul, we go on social media an awful lot and we see the comments about um, about um, certain individuals. Uh, it, oh God, I'm. I'm do you know what? This, I'm, this is frustrating the living daylights out of me. It really, really, really is. Mm. Never. Even in the 70s, it was better than this. 
And I'm not talking about on the field or the team or the spirit and everything. I'm talking about what's going on behind it. Mm. And it, it's reminiscent to me of Kumar days. And you probably yeah. don't remember people back in the 90s. You were far too young then, weren't you, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, that, that was when I started going. That was late 80s. Um, right. I do remember it. Yeah, I was only like 9, 10, 11, something like that. But yeah, I do remember it. Um, and it was bleak times. And I'd like to think moving forwards, if we just change the way it's structured and the strategy, then we could. Don't we come forward. on a play ball with, with the ground and the infrastructure, the main stand, the Ray Hobra main stand, might I add, does need uh, some attention at some junction. But you know what? We, we, we've lifted it out of the 70s doldrum that it was, right? Brought it into the modern era, won a major trophy, got promotion, and then everything has just gone down for 10 years. This is, I'm not, I, I, can I emphasize 10 years? Huh? Go on then. 3,650 days. Well done. 10 years. What do we think? It's looking heavily like Aitor Karanka is um, going to be our next manager. Now, I don't know whether that's, that, that's certainly not official yet, but he's certainly the the out, the, out, the out far and away favourite. What do people think of that? Do you know much about him, Lee? Aitor Karanka, where's, where's he? That's not the... Where's yeah, he before? Explorer. Forest, Forest, Forest to Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Yeah. yeah, I remember him from Middlesbrough. Do you know what? Yeah. I, I can't even make cut pass comment on him. I don't know enough about him. Uh, that's fair. Never, never come across him. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's it, it's tough, you know. It, yeah, no, I know he was a good player for Real Madrid. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, I think you know. I think a lot of people would like to see. You know, he, he might have. You know, I'm sure he got has got the passion to to go in there and and do. I all keep these. saying it week after week. I'd love Ian Holloway. Oh, I mean, you know that that. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it, yeah, is I mean that 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 need you. I think they need someone like that. He's a posh man, Barry Fry, to get it going again. You know. What about what about Lee Bowyer, Liam? Liam, what about Lee Bowyer? Perfect. Yeah. I think I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Perfect. What Perfect. about what about if we turn around and said Nigel Clough? No. No. He ain't a blues. No. I do, Bo, I think Bo is. Bo, I don't. I don't see. You know, that's like a perfect fit. Personally, I think yeah. that's what 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 it, it needs. You know, someone that's it's been certainly... there at the club before, and you know, and that, that's what a lot of clubs are doing nowadays. You know, they they bring the former players back, so they know the identity, they know the way the team wants to run, they know how it should be going on and, and how it should be done. And and you've got a player that was playing at the very top of the top of top of winning major trophies at that time. Now coming back to what being a manager. You know who isn't going to look up to that? Who isn't going to respect it? And you know, I think it's. Uh, I didn't even that didn't even enter my mind. So I think it's a great shout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. certainly never had a. We know what certainly... I'm drinking, by the way. Oh, sorry, Paul. Ray Hobro wants to know what I'm drinking. It's a, a little tot of my homemade Chardonnay. Here you go. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say the managers that we've had back that have played for us over the years. You know, going back to Trevor. You know, Steve Bruce, um, obviously um, Gary Rowett, you know. The, we haven't had a bad one, have we, really? It usually works. Gary Pendry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pendry Gary was... Pendry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was awful. It's down, it's down <laughs> so knowing the philosophy no, of the club. That. Yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. yeah, they get the fans in the club, don't they, Liam, when they come back, and that, and get, that helps. Yeah, straight away you get the fans. You know, if you're yeah. getting a manager in that uh, doesn't sit with the fans, you've, that's already an uphill battle. And then you don't get it with with the players. That's another help uphill battle. You know, it's it's a constant struggle. So you get someone that has been there before, been there and done it. Then you've got a leg up. You've you've mm. got a point already for you. Yeah. Then then you start moulding a team that the sort of fans like. You know, a grafting team, a working team, players that are gonna sort of work hard and do a bit. You know, you chuck a chuck a flair player in there as well. You know, that's that's the teams we had. That's a, you know, you didn't have. Many flair players in our team. No. We, what Zerati, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. how many other flair players? Seb Larson and McFadden were flair players, but they still grafted their yeah, they legs did. off. You yeah, know, that, that you that's, know, that's a kind word for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying the Blues team isn't like that right now because that's that's not necessarily true by all the players. I think that that if we're talking about teams of past and what they've been like, Birmingham. That, that's I think that's what fans 
you know, want to see. And like I said, I'm not claiming to watch all the games and know everything that was going on with Birmingham. That's just how I see it. Mm. I just think we, we need a character, right? We, we, we need cheering up a little bit, right? We need a lift. We're the only football club that retires a, a number 22 shirt when, you know, you're 17-year-old goes off to Brucey or Dortmund. We're the only club that can announce that the football manager of that club or the head coach, whatever you want to call them, ridiculous words, is leaving three quarters of the way through lockdown, yeah? That should have been hushed until the end of the season. We'd have perfectly understood. We know that his village has been decimated by this evil COVID-19, right? And we would absolutely completely understand, but we don't need to hear it halfway through the season. Why can't we, as a football club, start doing things the right way? I mean, Watford top you on the manager point. Don't they, Jim? I, yeah. I, I, uh, I agree with you. I think, you know, there's some things that, like I said before, maybe I'm too out of touch with football, but it's just mind-boggling. You don't understand it. You don't get it. You know, it's weird. And, and then in things, they don't help the football club. They don't help the players play. Doesn't, you know, mm. we can talk all day, you know, as players saying these things don't affect us. And most of the time they don't. But Of course I do. You're human. But managers leave and, you know, you go from one style to another right at the end of the season while you're in a scrap. It doesn't help. What are your thoughts? So, sorry, Liam. What are your thoughts on um, touching on the Jude Bellingham thing and the, the whole business? I mean, I don't know if you heard, but we've got a mural up, you know, picture of him and stuff. What are your initial thoughts about that? Do you think that's a bit, a bit small time? I don't, yeah, I, do you know what? It, 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 it's amazing. It is amazing because what he's done coming through at that age um, and, and, you know, being in the team this season, it has been amazing. It's been great. But retiring a shirt, you know, if I was going to retire anyone's, I'd retire Obers, you know. But, you know. I thought he was going to say, I thought he was going to say number six then. <laughs> no, no <laughs> chance. Keep giving it out to anybody. God, <laughs> keep that rolling out. That's right. Uh, right. Ray Hobro is calling me out. He's saying that he thinks I'm drinking water. No, there it is, Ray, in a, in a gym bottle, my homemade Chardonnay. <laughs> I'm going to have some more. Made from potatoes. Like, got, like, got, I, we... like I said, it's great. it is great for him. And it's great to see that academy producing players like that. And hopefully yeah. there'll be more. more. But yeah. retiring shirts and things, I think, you know, it, it can ridiculous. be a little bit too fast. Sorry, I'll, I'll put my oar in. It was embarrassing. It was absolutely <laughs> embarrassing to have Villa fans coming up to me in the street here. Right, and I live 60 miles from Brom. Coming up to me in the street, and you know, what, 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 it was tin pot. It was shameful, yeah. ridiculous. Look, I love the yeah. guy, right? 22, Jude Bellingham, what a superstar he's going to be. Yeah. But come on, let's be real yeah. about this. Yeah, mm. he's left us for an awful lot of money. Uh, and he's with his add ons, he's going to bring us some more money in at some junction, right? But to retire a shirt after one season, was it four go uh, two goals and four assists? Yeah, not yeah. knocking the lad. I'm not yeah. because no. I loved watching him play. I really did. Right? It was. Yeah. No, I'm putting this 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 emphasis for me is not going on Jude or his family at all. It's going on our football club for making a damn stupid, ridiculous decision, which has made us look like the laughing stock of the Midlands. Yeah. Mm. That's it. I'm the same well, as you. I want to, can't I? <laughs> uh, Paul, we need we need to um, push on, mate. To uh, one to eleven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to very quickly ask one live question, if that's all right, Chris. Go on then, quick. Paul Lilly was just asking, what does Liam think? Because at the moment, Liam, obviously, as I'm sure you know, we've got Paul Robinson on our, uh, you know, still working in our club. And he's at yeah. home on furlough. And, you know, a lot of people do think that he would have been the ideal person to step in for the last four games. And also, what would you make of him as the manager if he was to get the job? I totally agree that putting him in, you know, st him stepping in while, while we're... Just to injure him, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah. You know, I've not spoke to Robbo for a long, long time, obviously, and don't know what he's doing managing wise. Or I know he's within the football club and whether he'd want it. But again, it, it seems like an easy candidate, really. It, you know, mm. someone that's loved by the fans, someone who loves the club, who's working there right now, knows the philosophy and knows the club. So I don't see why that that wouldn't fit the role. But mm. it might be that you know the the owners of the club need a a name, some someone big O, you know, and things like that. But I, I, I don't see why that that shouldn't happen in, in Robbo, you know, stepping up to the plate. <laughs> mm, right, been given a chance, that's for sure. I don't certainly. care about a name. I care about passion. 
I care about pride. I care about commitment. I care about all the things that you should care. Now, if, if somebody like that, I mean, the, the bloke's furloughed, for Christ's sake, on nine games to go. And he couldn't even be on the sidelines. Nine games to go. And what did we win? Was it one of them? None of them. No. Uh, on. We never won none. We drew, we drew two. One. We drew one. We drew one. Yeah. We drew, we drew two one. and lost the rest. Somebody like that who's got the drive and the enthusiasm and everything to pick these lads up and say, "Come on, lads, off we go. We go again. We don't sit down. We don't sit still." He's furloughed at home. Wow. I mean, the boys would. Have, I'm sure the boys would have been asking for him. I'm sure, they would have been laughing at it that he's been furloughed and left at home. But mm. what stage does that put our football club in? That's a shame. That's a. James I'd have paid his wages, wages. gladly. Yeah. Well, props at all of it. Mm. See, another another person at home as well that I think we could utilise a lot more is James <coughs> Beattie. I think he's still on our payroll. Is he? Yeah, I is believe he, so. Uh, yeah, I didn't, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, centre forwards at a club, you know. Exactly. <laughs> I would yeah. have loved to have worked with him and, you know, certainly yeah. towards the end of the season, that's for sure. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Sorry, so at the beginning of the show tonight, things have to change. They've got to change. They've got to change fast, right? And I'm sorry, right, you, as much as, I don't want to say this, I think the, the man at the top's got to go, and now, quick, cut him off, get rid, right? For me, personally, I'll bring Panos back in. I know he had his little issues, but I'll tell you what, he had the club at art, what still chat to him on occasions, it? right? And, and you get Robbo on board, you get guards on board. I don't know a great deal about Steve Spooner's uh, track record, I'll be honest with you. But we, we want people back in our football club who care, who passionately care about the people coming through the turnstiles, yeah? Yeah. And that's the most important thing. Mm. I think Karanka would sort our defence out, potentially. I know he's quite a defensive-minded coach, isn't he, Mark? Yeah. I, I, I like I say, I, I'd, um, I've read on um, social media this week a lot of people slating him already, but I think mm. he's a good candidate, to be honest. Well, mm. only people slated Camp. Only yeah. because of what? The Sunderland fans. They still do. Yeah. I mean, sheep. I'm not. I'm Birmingham City fans. We're not sheep. Get a grip. Right. Get behind people. We've got to do our bit, but they've got to do theirs. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not Camp's, or wasn't Camp's biggest fan, but. He, you know, he's he's made he's turned things around. I know people still slay him. He's been a season saver, mate. He's been a season saver, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, different goalkeeper saved, since mate. January. I'll yeah. tell you what, what a great guy as well within the team or within the squad. I'll tell you that right now. If Camp, you're looking, yeah. for, looking yeah. for characters and people to jeer people up and actually get into people and you know want to win games and things like that. He makes his in him makes a worldie, right? Yeah. So that makes him a kind of. I wouldn't put him in the category of one of our best goalkeepers ever because we've had some absolute stonkers down the blues in, in the years gone by. I've never doubted his commitment. I've never doubted his the look on his face when the ball's gone in the net. Yeah. You know, he, he knows that he knows that he knows that you know we're hurting, right? And, and I think he gets it. And, and as soon as he had that little bubble cut off the top of his head, I think he picked himself up as a player. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Liam, do you do you, um, have you do you know Camp or have you played yeah, with him? Or? Yeah, I know him from the twenty ones when we were younger. Yeah. yeah. Nineteens, twenty ones. Yeah, I've known him for a yeah. long, long time. Great, great guy. You know, good goalkeeper, but even better, like in the dressing room, round, round the ground, and round the training ground with the boys. I love it because somebody in the main stand's got a big cardboard cut out of him. Great guy. Yes. <laughs> he come in the middle of a goal. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we get on to your one to eleven then, Liam? Let's do it. Go yeah. for it. So what's your formation? <laughs> it's a four, three, three. Okay. I know. And it really, it should be four four two. But I thought, well, you know what? Let's go a bit modern, and I need to fit a few people in. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I've I've got Fozzy. In, to be fair, the Carling Cup team. I mean, you know, you, you can't go much wrong than that. Um, that was quick. But, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we, have a few, we have a couple of change up. I've got yeah. I've got Fozzy in goal. Yeah. Steve Carp right back. So was it was it tough with Foster in goal between him and Joe Hart? It, it was tough. It was even yeah. tougher when Mike, Mike was tweeting me, telling me that he'd pick me. Christ, <laughs> in, in the, he must have really been struggling. Uh, yeah, between between Fozzy and Joe, really, really tough. The only thing yeah. that done it was the Carling Cup. You know, yeah. that was the only thing that done it. Two great goalkeepers. Two to play in front of them two was like amazing. And two proper good guys as well. Not just yeah. 
you know, just goalkeepers, but proper two solid, solid fellas. So, uh, yeah, two good guys. Kari, uh, right back, standard. Yeah. You know, yeah, no brainer. I spoke about spoke about him being a skipper. Um, Roger and obviously uh, Scotty Dan, uh, centre halves. <coughs> obviously paired with you know like Raddy Jaidi for years. You know, played with him obviously. Um, you know, Frank Goodrew when he was there. What, what he was very good, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really good guy. And that Joyidi uh, with his headers, that Joyidi's headers were just unbelievable, weren't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And obviously, you know, what it was like a man mountain. You know, even yeah. even tiny. You yeah. know, even tiny. You know, what a great. I, pe- pe- I think the first year I was there between Raddy and Ty, like Raddy and uh, Tiny, they were sort of switching out. So I got to play with them <laughs> quite a lot and got to know them really well. So um, but obviously. It's tough to go past anyone for the Carling Cup team, really. I'll, I'll, there'll be one in there, but it's tough to go anywhere apart from them. So, Roger, Scotty, sadly not allowed myself, which is disgraceful because it's my own team, but fair enough, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've You're the manager? Mur- yeah, is that, that's yeah. right. I've, I've stuck Murphy in at left-back. Uh, yeah, good player. Very good. When he was playing left-back when I was at centre-half, and then obviously I came back and started playing left-back, but, you know, never sort of did we not get on and, and you know and, and things like that? What you know, what a great left foot as well. Um so yeah. great guy. Um and I've got three in the middle. Uh Seb Larson. Yeah. What a right foot. I mean brilliant free, brilliant free player. Kick specialist. Free yeah. kick specialist. I knew him when he was at Arsenal as a boy actually. When I used to play like sort of play for the youth system playing against him and knew about him then. Obviously when he Move to Birmingham. What like what signing and what player he end up becoming? He's, a, um, he's, he's probably the closest thing we'll ever see at St Andrews to David Beckham, isn't he? I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Like, just just pure that right foot. Just any free kicks, corners. Yeah, his free yeah. kicks were brilliant. I used to yeah. love them because they were just they were whipped in. They weren't floated. They were whipped. Mm. They were proper. You know, Stephen Clements left foot. You know, proper yeah. sort of whipped in with pace. If they weren't going in for him. We were sort of glancing him in, um, and obviously got on with him really well. We were sort of the same age group within that, you know, me, Seb Larson, James McFadden, Stuart Parnaby, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, all sort of that age, young kids growing up. So we got on really well. Um, so yeah, Seb. Then I've got Fergie in the middle. Um, yeah, him and him and Johnny, tough ones to pick. Obviously, only went for Fergie because of the Carling Cup win, but obviously, we'd love to have got Johnny in there as well. Um, it was a class up. It was a class up though, Winnie Ferguson. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. he really was. I think yeah. you know what? The other one, obviously, the other one really tough was was Lee Carsley. Cars, you know, yeah. to, be able to fit him in. Mm. Because when we needed uh, that experience, when we were getting promoted that year, Cars came in and gave us that like Yeah. He knew football. He knew how to get win games and he, he yeah. instilled that into us. And when obviously when Cars was leaving. It was like, right, who's going to take that void? You know, and again, goes back to the Birmingham team now and a lot of championship teams. Who takes that void of being that sort of controlling central midfielder, that experienced pro? Yeah. And Fergie came in and took that and just run with it, which was, which yeah. was amazing. Went down from Rangers, you know, what a signing. You know, mm, it was yeah. like, brilliant. Uh, did that for us. Um, and then, obviously, then I got Bo playing on the left of the three, which... Speaks for himself, really, an absolute nutcase. Great player, yeah. Brilliant for us. Brilliant for us. Obviously, was in the later stage of his career when he came came to us, like Kari was and like Fergie. But you know, them mouldy bald young boys uh, fit really well. So yeah, Bo, brilliant. Did, did uh, Craig? Did Craig Gardner run in close? Yeah, I mean, he's going to kill me for not putting him in there. But it was just, <laughs> He's on his way down, you know, mate. Yeah, exactly, you're not wrong. Yeah, exactly. If he, <laughs> if he gets a job, I'm not getting anywhere near it, am I? So I screwed that one up. But yeah, I mean, you know, guards being guards, certainly knowing him at Villa and then coming to Blues, obviously, great guy. Spent a number of, you know, years of him, like, laughs. I still, um, oh, still speak to him now, but obviously, uh, and his right foot, you know, speaks mm. for itself, scored goals all yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. couldn't fit him in the formation. Um, mm. and then I've got uh, James McFadden on the left. Wide left, yeah. Wide left. 
or on the right. I mean, these these three can just go wherever they want, really. I've got Fadden, Oba, and Zarati. Um, okay. F- Faddy speaks himself, like, won, won the left foot, set me up numerous of times at the back stick. So, uh, perfect player and, and a great guy. Um, Mario, didn't really know nothing about him before he came to the club and sort of was sort of a shy, sort of thinking, who is this fella? You know, he's thinking he ain't going to run around and do the yard graph. But by the end of it, I was like, we was all saying, we'll run for you. Don't worry about it. You just do what you need to do and we'll do all the running you need. It's fine. You do special stuff. Um, and yeah. I say, obviously, when we got relegated, not to be able to sign him and he went on, he went on to what sign for Lazio, I think it was. And, and yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Wow, someone to play with. And, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And over Femi Martins, um, obviously that's purely, is that mainly down to obviously him being the hero at Wembley? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, over, you know, there weren't too much to over. Obviously, obviously, what well, he broke his leg and had some serious like problems with injuries at, at his time with us. Um, mm. But couldn't not have him in the team when he's when he's tapped that one in to win the Carling Cup for us. So there's no he, tap, he, he glided in. <laughs> yeah, glided. that's right. There's no way I was leaving him out, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> obviously you got you got you got Super Kev, Forsell. Oh, I mean, Cameron Jerome, yeah. ridiculous. You know, Super Kev obviously knew him at Villa. Yeah, knew him like when he was at West Brom. He done the same that's as me good. the other way. Got on really well with Super. Taught me things about what centre forwards used to think of, what they used to do, so I could try and counteract it. Like amazing, one yeah, of the best set, like finishes I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, Mikel, Mikel was brute. Like Mikel, when I first got to the club, just what a nice guy. Like just yeah. and knew and and once he was fit, could just score at fulls of goals, which is a shame. Yeah. Obviously, he couldn't couldn't keep fit really. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm just thinking who could have competed with McFadden on the left. You got McSheffrey, maybe Capo. Yeah, yeah. She- Chef ain't gonna be too happy with me not putting him in. There, <laughs> so I'm sure, I'll have some stick with him. To be fair, I mean, I even Bodajor. I mean, even he played. Bodajor, yeah. Played, played in front of me. Yeah. Played in front of me for a number of games, and he was he was brilliant. You know, when yeah. then he took over that left wing back at Wigan. Um, so they obviously just saw him doing all the running instead of me up and down that line and just thought, right, we'll just get him in. So, uh, no, he, yeah. he was great. I used to like him. I used to like him. I, I remember when we went down, I, I've got to be honest, I thought he would be one of the first to sort of jump ship, but he, he hung around for a good few months, didn't he? He did, yeah. Really quiet and like, I sort of kept himself to himself, but if you, you know, like a joke or anything, it, like, <laughs> it'd just be, you know, real sort of laughing, just really nice guy. The other one yeah. was Palacios. Like, what a player. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. another person I've tried to fit in the team. Wilson was just ridiculous. Such mm. a um, like, great, 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 great player. Like, another one to have at the club that sort of just, you could see his potential and it was going to really kick off. But just obviously, due to the club, just it obviously, we it just didn't happen. And mm. what, what a good player. I tried to fit him in, but couldn't either. You got Fabrice Mwamba as well. He was good, wasn't he? I know, like, Fabrice, yeah. Obviously, get on, got on with him really well. Um, but yeah, just it's just so hard to fit. It's just too it's hard. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. But, but this conversation quick, tells me just how so many hard. good players we've had, how many yeah. good players we've had over the yeah. years. You know, during yeah. your time there. Yeah, I, I think that that's you know, like we talked, it's a recruitment and getting players in that's sort of wanted to come to the club, whether it's proving something, whether it's you know they were wanting to come there and play, whether they were coming here to prove the club that they've come from that they were good players, or whether but they were t- trying to, you know, take another step in their career. And mm. that's what sort of mm. Birmingham have done over the years. Um, and hopefully they can sort of, you know, get back to that. And then players, you know, like we say, the, the calibre of players, uh, that, that's what you get. Quite a few people putting on the shout box now. Chucho as well, Christian Benitez, God bless him. Yeah. I mean, God rest his soul. What a great guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's... Yeah, tragic, you know, obviously tragic. And what, what a great guy. Like, another one, real quiet. Yeah. But if you've got speaking to him in that sort of broken English, like, really nice guy. And he just, it, it just sort of used to stumble off his shins. You know, people would be like, what the heck is he doing? But it just, he'd end up just stumbling through people and just slotting, you know, he just yeah. sort of had that pass whip into that bottom corner. And he sort mm. of perfected it in the end. You know, yeah. really nice guy. 
Just a no, very, very good team. So very, yeah. I mean, that's what I say. It's, it's, it's so hard to fit. Like, well, there's been so many good players that I've played with over that period of time. You could pick. I could have picked two players for each position. That's a, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Three. Yeah. yeah. It okay, like back to it. Good. Harry Johnson is saying they are uh, saying on different sites on social media that franchise has been announced on Wednesday. Yeah, just, as far as I'm concerned, I shan't uh, hold my breath until such time as somebody stood up <laughs> in the cop with a scarf. And Daniel Ryan said, yeah, ask you about uh, Benitez. Obviously, we, we all know about that. We'll just have that one. Um, and... Liam, it sounds, Taylor, it sounds yeah. like um, it sounds like you had you've got nothing but good memories for you from from your time at Blues. Is that is that, is yeah. that correct? Oh, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. I think you know I had going there. Obviously, I didn't know what I didn't know I didn't know what to expect. You know, because obviously I was coming from Villa. I didn't know what to expect. I wasn't. Yeah. I'm not a Birmingham lad. I'm not a Midlands lad. So I'm a South London boy coming up there. Um, so I didn't know what to expect. So I went in there, sort of not knowing what I was going to get. Yeah. And I found a club, a family that sort of embraced me and brought me in. Whether that was Brucey giving my captain's armband at the start, whether that was the boys all at the same age that we all got on and hanged about with each other and the families did as well, but sort of had some, you know, unbelievable times there. You know, even just thinking of training round days. From know. a fan's perspective, yeah, you cross the A38. Mm. That, that is that is as far as we're concerned that is the divide between yeah, the good yeah. side of Birmingham and the dark side of Birmingham right mm. you cross the A38 and come and give us your all you will be part of the family forever yeah forever I mean, that's, that's what the, that's what the people want you know and that's what that's what I did you know I didn't go for anything else to, and that, that's why it was such good times I say good times they're obviously some good time for us days. as well but some great times, yeah. It was some great good time for us fans as well, you know. Yeah, of course. We did the big time, we got there. Been, yeah. You know, we're looking, we're looking over the A38 and saying, Yeah, we've got some silverware, <laughs> yeah. <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Liam. Well, it's been a pleasure, mate. No, it's yeah, all it's my brilliant. pleasure. I, I really appreciate you asking me on, and really nice to, to talk to you and talk. Lovely chatting, yeah. Reminisce, really. What can we say, yeah. ladies and gentlemen? Of course, it's been a talk and talk all show on a Monday night. Thanks, well, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to Mark Yates. Mark, Mark Adams. Mark Adams, I've got my glasses on. Come on, Nick. Only got one job. Yates, he was a good player, wasn't he? Remember him? Yeah, yeah he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. Yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah, yes. Oh, glasses Cannon. on. Cannon. Absolute Cannon. And um, thanks as well to Mr. Sheen, our uh, one and only Mr. Hipkiss. Thank you very much. No problem, thanks again. Pleasure as always. Uh, and all. Mr. Chris Brown for hosting yeah. and for putting it all together. Nice one, thank you. Yeah. From myself, good night. The football season's over. We'll tell you when we're uh, sabbatical is going to be. We'll have a little one, not a big one. But most of all, tonight, Carlin Cup winner, the one and only, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so, so, so very much. <laughs> Liam Ridgewell. Thank you. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Nice one, Liam. Thank you. Cheers, fellas. Thanks, mate. Good night, all. Good night. Watch you till the end of the day We're so happy Following the blues We love you What more can we say?